Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my humble, humble hacienda on the hill here in Livingston, Montana. Okay, I've got the 20th of November of 2021, and today I thought I'd do, I'm doing a, a, a knife video, but it's not, it's not really a review. What I, for a change of pace, what I thought I would do is explain to folks here what I expect to see out of an EDC fixed blade, an everyday carry, general purpose, general knock around, everyday carry fixed blade knife. You know, call it a camp knife, call it a, a bird and trout knife, whatever. Okay, that, that's what I'm up to here. Rather than just taking a knife, any knife, and starting to review it because the simple fact of the matter is is I can't afford to do that. I'm a standalone channel. I'm not sponsored. People don't send me stuff, you know, like that. And then, you know, buying knives gets kind of expensive, but I've got plenty of them. Okay. The knife, this knife that I'm going to, don't think that I'm really necessarily reviewing this. I guess you could look at it this way, but I'm not. I'm using this spider co. Bull River Knife is an example, okay, is a, is a prop, is a, whatever you want to call it, you know, is an aid for me to be able to communicate with you on what I would like to see this knife be to, to match my expectations for a general purpose, you know, everyday carry fix knife, okay, that, that's all I'm up to, okay. Now, right off the get-go, let me take a pencil here. I hope you can see this, and I, I know this knife is going to get out of focus. You know, I got a real problem that way. But I picked this knife right here because what I'm going to do, I got this for $42, shipped to the door off of Amazon. It's actually a pretty good knife for Spider Co., except for it's coming out of China. I'm not exactly too thrilled about that, you know, but... Nonetheless, okay, here's what I'd like to see out of a knife, using this as an example. Okay, you see how this, this hilt to this knife, let me get this over here. See how it kind of runs along here like this, and then the knife dips down like that? I really don't like that. I want a knife where the point is in line, if you will, with that pencil. You see what I'm getting at here? See how, you know, how we're... The whole mass of metals kind of caving down. I mean, I don't, uh, a draw point is fine, but I want the spine of this knife to remain relatively straight until it's time for it to dip down, if that makes any sense, where I can get this in frame. Okay, that's one thing right off the get go. Another thing is right on this particular knife right here, it says steel. A lot of people don't pay any attention to this steel, but this is. HCR13MOB. I'm reading it right there. If this is autofocus will work, which it won't, you know. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, right there. You might be okay, you can see that. Well, these MOB stainless steel blades, I'm not too particularly hep on them. I'm I don't hate them or nothing like this, but this is not really all that great of steel, and that's why you can get this knife for $42. Now what you want to do when you're picking out a knife or something like that, and you know what the steel is, whether it be D2 tool steel or 1095 uh, 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 high carbon steel, whatever, I'd be looking up on the internet, you know, and see what you're getting yourself into. Okay, okay, well, I covered the steel. Now, this blade right here, I've already measured this. This blade is a little less than an eighth of an inch. It's a little bit thinner than I'd like to see. I'd like... For knock-around knives, I want to see one-eighth of an inch in here, okay? Now, like I say, when I get done with this, this is going into the butcher block. I'm giving this to my wife for a kitchen knife is really what I'm up to here. Okay, now, on a knock-around, everyday fixed blade, I don't want to see, I don't want to see, let me get a, I don't want to see a blade much longer than about four inches. And I think this guy was four inches, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is. It's four inches right in here to this choiling right here, okay? And uh, so it's got about the right length that I'd like to see. 
And the belly of the knife here, I'd like to see the belly come up a little bit. I, I want a little bit more of a belly in here and a little bit more of a draw point. Now, I, I don't want a point that this that's this sharp. The reason being is because you get real pointed knives like this. You know what they're going to do? The, the, you're going to get to digging around on something and you're going to bust that point. It's just that doggone simple. Okay, this choiling right here, I'd like to see this cut out a little bit more. You know? And then this trademark hole right here that Spider Co's got going on. Nah, don't need that there, you know, okay? And then right here on top of the blade, I'd like to see some jimping. You know, even if the knife has to come up a little bit and then draw it back down, fine. But get some jimping right in here. And probably one of the biggest problems I see with this knife, even though it's a pretty good knife for 42 bucks, is... It, this right here is G10 on these handles, okay? You know, these scales here are G10. The problem of it is, this particular G10 right here is really, really slick. I mean, there's no traction on here. I The four materials that I like in knife handles are hardwoods, G10, as long as there's some checkering or some pattering done so this thing isn't so slick. I like... Uh, micarta, micarta makes some real good handles, and I like bone, as long as the bone is seasoned, really good bone, like what they use on Puma knives, or the old German ones, okay, now, this handle right here, I, I want to see a few little finger bumps right in here, y you understand what I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be anything real outrageous, but just a few little finger bumps right here, and, of course, there's this lanyard hole right here. I, I want to see that. And even a little jimping up here along the spine right here was, would be a good idea. And then on the on the, the back of the knife right here, the, I want to see a pummel back there. You know, but this knife, the, you know, the scales come rounded off right there. So if you go pounding like this, you, you know, you're going to more than likely ruin uh, these scales, and that's another thing I've got to say, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> these guys that take these knives out and pound on them, what did they call that, uh, batoning knives, this is nonsense, you never beat on a blade on a knife, it's just that simple, you know, using the handle to pound on like this is one thing, but when you're beating on this blade here, get a, get a hatchet, get a machete, get something, but don't beat on your knife, Okay, and this handle right here, this handle is just a tiny bit short for me, just a little bit, you know. But I want to see a handle that's around four inches long. This is like three and three quarters or something, you know. Let me hold this up there. Okay, and let's see. So there we are with that. I want decent steel, and I think I've described the shape okay. Uh... Oh, yeah, and I want, I want to see a tang all the way through this knife, you know, the steel going all the way through here. Uh, I don't know what else. I'm, I, you know, there's just some stipulation that I want to see in a knock-around, everyday carry, smaller fixed blade, you know. So I think I pretty much covered it. Okay, now, I might want to say something real quick here, too, about these sheets. This is a leather sheath. It's not really in that bad of shape. You know, I mean, it, what I mean, it's not that bad that, that of quality and whatnot. Have but I personally would rather have some of these newer Crydex sheaths. They won't wear out like leather, and they're pretty doggone tough. So I just thought I'd throw that in there. And then this deal right here, I got a, a lanyard I want to stick in here. Because this is going out in my wife's chick, you know, part of her kitchen knife, so this won't stay on here. But I'm to change the angle of this camera. Mine, I'm finding I'm having to reach up way too high to do some of this goofy stuff. But anyway, yeah, there you go with that deal there. I can get these la these nice lanyards, by the way, from uh, ELE on on Etsy. There's a fellow by the name of Angel that makes them. Really nice. Really nice lanyards. ELE on Etsy. E-T-S-Y dot com. 
Okay, there you are with that. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of what, uh, what I think makes up a knife. Okay, now, as a bonus to this video, a bonus, let me, let me see where I'm at. Now, I'm just going to show you real quick. This is one of my, I've never used this knife before. It's one of my showpiece knives. It's one of my better knives. I, I spent 10 years trying to locate this knife. I finally had to buy it out of a, a cutlery shop in Germany. Okay. Germanknifeshop.com is where I bought this thing. And it's called the White Hunter. And this particular knife has been around since the 40s or 50s. You know, two, uh, two centuries ago. <laughs> And I'll show you how old ta or Puma knives are, and I'm talking about the handmade German ones. I'm not talking about the SKBs and the IPs and all. That's all Chinese junk. You, you want to get a knife. If you want to really get into these German knives, right here, made in Germany. That's what you want. Hander belt. Let me see if I can get this. Yeah. I've showed this knife off several times. I've showed my p collection of Pumas off, German-made Pumas, several times. So I'm not I'm not getting into all this because I'd be here for another ten minutes. But this is called a White Hunter. It took me ten years to find this. It cost me a little over three hundred. If you go looking for one of these right now, it's going to cost you four hundred. I advise you to stay away from eBay too because you're liable to get ripped off. But this is as this this has got as good a steel as it comes. This design has been around for since I I could say the 40s or 50s. The United States government wouldn't let the German people start shipping these into the United States until about 1957 or whatever. Puma has been in business since uh, seven, 1769. Puma knives are older than the country of America. That's a fact. Okay, I'm just showing you this. This is just a, by the way, the Pumas don't necessarily have uh, lanyard holes right here. This, this is a, this right here is, is, is a trademark of Puma. The, this lanyard is built into the sheath. You see what it does here? It goes right through the hole and you wrap, you wrap the lanyard around the top of the knife. If you can possibly see that. Okay. I know that doesn't make any sense, but trust me, it's a really good sturdy. Let me pull this out. Anyway, there's a white hunter. I haven't even taken off the Rockwell proofing on this knife yet. See that little dot right there that that arrow's pointing to? That's a proofing mark. But this right here is as fancy of a Puma as I've got. It's, it's my prized knife. Let me put it to you that way. It's called a White Hunter. And good luck if you want to try to buy one of these or find one. This has got European age stag on the handles. You know, you can see they're really, really riveted in there, real good and tight. It's got a big the finger guard right here. Look at that jimping right there. There you go. This is some quality stuff right here. I just thought I'd show this off just for the heck of it. Right there. Puma White Hunter. Handmade in Germany. If you don't see that kind of stuff, you don't have a true Puma. You know, they use a special steel and, and you know, coming out of solids in Germany. They've got a proprietary mix of their own and all of that other stuff. But there you go. I just thought I'd throw this in. This is a White Hunter by Puma. It's my most valued knife. I don't use it. It's mostly a showpiece. Okay, I hope this video made some kind of sense. I better close this video on out. We'll see you folks on down the trail. Take care of yourselves and adios. Goodbye.